Welcome to the 100-fold radio broadcast with Apostle Dr. J.W. Webster and Dr. C.L. Webster, where we are bringing many sons to glory. And here's your host, Dr. J.W. Webster. natural realm began spiritually. Comprende? So then if you have eyes in your, in your head, that means that seeing was happening before you got here. If you have ears on your body, that means that hearing was happening before you got here. Do you think you're the first person that ever heard something? No. So if you are able to speak 
That means that communication was happening before we got here. So all the things that we see in this natural realm were already happening before we were born. The sense of smell was here before we got here. All the things that we see in the natural realm, most of us have become accustomed to it because we live our life more naturally than we do spiritually. And so we become accustomed to all the things that happen around us and those things that become normal to us and they're customary to us because we live our life here. Yahshua didn't live his life here. His physical body was here. His life was lived in Uranos, Shamayim, and let me say in English, heaven. So his life was lived in the heavenlies. His physical body was here, but his presence was here, but his life was in heaven. Remember the scripture said, he said in the book of St. John, he said, he said, no man has ascended, but the same that has descended, even the son of man, what was the last line? Which is in heaven. So what he said was, I'm standing on the earth, you see me, you hear me, you smell me, you feel me, but I'm in heaven. Paul said, I'm seated where? In heavenly places with Christ Jesus. So our physical body is limited to this realm, but our spirit is unlimited. How many of you ever had a dream before? You had a dream? Where were you when you had this dream? Most of you were in the bed when you had a dream, right? Your physical body was in the bed on the mattress, but your spirit was gone. Right? Your spirit was in the Swiss Alps skiing. I don't know. Whatever you like to do, that's what you were doing. You were catching the big one in your dreams. But your physical body was in the earth, in your bed, wrapped up in a blanket. But your spirit was out venturing around. You know why? Because spirits don't sleep. Spirits don't sleep. Physical bodies sleep. Physical bodies get upset. Physical bodies respond to the natural realm. Your spirit don't do that. That's why when someone agitates you and gets on your nerve and starts to bother you, you hear that calmness of your spirit saying, don't worry about it. But your flesh is louder than your spirit. That's why you went to jail. Because you followed your flesh rather than following your spirit. If I could learn how to live by my spirit at all times, then I would get only what the spirit has to offer at all times. We are not humans having a spiritual experience. What are we? We are spirits having a human experience. So when you look at it like that, you understand that my spirit is larger than my flesh. My spirit is way bigger than my flesh. My spirit is so big, it is the only place that God decided to live. Know you not that your body is what? The temple of the Holy Ghost. So your physical body houses the spirit. So then your spirit is able to be contained within this body. Your spirit lives within this body, but your spirit has domination and authority over the body and where the body resides. So the spirit has domination over where the body resides. Where does your body reside? Well, let me tell you where mine resides at. My body resides on the earth. <laughs> and so wherever my body is, my spirit has more authority. And because my spirit has more authority than what happens... And what I do should be a direct result of what my spirit has said, not what my flesh has said. Are y'all still with me? So then there is a pattern. There's a map. There's a pattern. There's a thing called navigation. And there's a thing called uh, uh, to patternize or a blueprint, right? The blueprint is a view of what is to come. When you set your navigation to go to Texas, you ain't in Texas. But eventually, if you follow the correct pattern, you will get there. Are y'all here? So then there has to be a starting point. When you set your navigation, you don't set your navigation from, from Peoria unless you're in Peoria. If you're in here right now today, you're right here, and you want to get to out of Sacaton, there is such a place. You don't set your navigation to start you from Chandler. You start from where you are. Are y'all here? So the starting point is where? Where you are. You start where you are. You don't start tomorrow. Don't start yesterday. Don't try to rewind time and say I'm going to start. No, no. You start where you are. The best place to start is from where you are. Because you can't go back and fix anything. You can't try to prevent stuff. But you start from where you are and then you flow. How many of y'all been to the Niagara Falls before? 
You been there, you seen that, you seen that water? Guess what? Before you get to the Niagara Falls, you know it's there. How do you know it's there, Dawu? Because you can see it from a distance. And you can, what else can you do? You can hear the sound of it. And, and what else can you do? You can smell it. You know it's there. Just the FYI, I ain't never been there. <laughs> but I can imagine, I can imagine because I know how the earth works. I know the pattern of the earth. I mean, some things you know has happened whether you were there or not. You ever been to the Grand Canyon? It wasn't always the Grand Canyon. It was the Grand Flatland at one time. But something happened before we came to the earth, before most of us was born, something happened in that area. Proof that it happened is, go look. It's there. It's like the quiet but deadly ones. <laughs> Silent but deadly. Oh, <laughs> hallelujah. So understand that. Who are we? We're spirits, right? And so we have authority. But the only way to get that authority is to follow the pattern. Notice in the Old Covenant, Moses built the tabernacle, right? But he had to build it a specific way. He had to build it perfectly. Like when Noah built the ark, right? Noah didn't have a hammer and nails. You watch TV today, and they have Noah building an ark, and he got a hammer, and he got some, some, uh, some number two nails, and he got all these things, and he's building an ark. There wasn't no hammer and nails involved when Noah built the ark. Sears wasn't even here yet. He didn't run down to Home Depot or Lowe's and get his equipment. He built the ark with the things that he had in his possession. He built the ark with the things that were available to him now. Are y'all here? So then his safety began with what he already had. So it was already in his spirit, and he knew what to do. He didn't need no hammer. He didn't need no nails. He took the wood that he had, and he took the sap from the trees, and he sealed the wood, and he built a gigantic, what we call a ship. Well, we call it a ship, right? But he did it with what he had. Are y'all here? So then his starting point was where? Right here. Right here. So where do you start? Right here. So while we're wondering how to fix it, St. John 15, start at verse 1. I am the true vine. I am the what? The true, true vine. vine. My father. And my father is the husband. Is the husband man. Read. Every branch every in me branch that, in beareth, me that not beareth not fruit, not fruit what? he taketh away. He taketh away. Read. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it. He purges it that, that it, it may might bring forth more, more fruit. fruit. So when you start doing good, hear this, when you begin to follow this pattern and you start doing good, sometimes... It feels like bad stuff happens. You start flowing. You start in the beginning, and it feels like things begin to break down. Your relationship started out great. It started out great. Every time, you know, you counsel somebody who's already been married for a while, you know what they say? It started out great. Mm -hmm. You know why it started out great? Because in the beginning, you put that best person forward. You represented yourself with the best of your abilities. You didn't go in not brushing your teeth. It wouldn't have worked. She would have told you right away, move around. What y'all tell guys now when they keep it stepping? She would have told you. Right? But you put your best personality forward in the beginning. So it always started well. So then when it starts good, and then you feel that fall off, that don't mean that it's over. That don't mean that it's ending. All that means is God may be purging you that you may bring forth more fruit. And that word there is to cleanse of filth and impurities. Which word? Which word? Um, pruneth. He may, that he pruneth it, right? Mm -hmm, yep. Okay, read. So pruneth is to cleanse of uh -huh. filth of impurities. To cleanse of what? Filth, filth and impurities. And impurities. So stop, wait a minute. So then what, what happens is we start out great and what we don't realize is although you start out great, although you feel good, there's still some impurities there. There's still some issues that need to be dealt with. There's still some problems that need to be answered. So although we're starting out great and we're doing well, the problems still exist and God is saying, I know what those problems are and you have to let me assist you in dealing with them. Read. 
to prune trees and vines from useless shoots. From useless shoots. So there are some things in you that are useless. Shoot. <laughs> some things that are useless. But we don't know that they're useless. Only God knows. And the only way for the uselessness to be revealed is that we begin to operate from our original place. When you operate from your original place, then all the uselessness will begin to come to the top. What do they call it? Dross. Right. Dross. And another one says to purge. To purge. So that's the dross coming up. Right. Anybody ever been to Jamaica, man? I need that action, man. Somebody help me with that. Anything you want to know. <laughs> you go to Jamaica, and they got this big pot, and they're making, and they're, pur- they're purifying the gold because you want to buy the real deal, right? You want to buy the real thing. And so they got this pot boiling. I've seen it on video. They got this pot boiling, and the gold is in it. And all this nasty stuff comes up to the top. And you're like, I, what in the world? I don't want that. No, you don't want that, man. But that's why they turn the fire. No, I'm not. I know I'm messing you up. Sorry about that. We got a real Jamaica mind, but she won't talk for me. So we got, when that stuff comes up, then they take this thing and they slide it off. And it's called dross. And it looks nice and clean. He said, I'll take it right now. And he said, no, man, no, man. Because it ain't time yet. Because once it boils for a little while longer, guess what? Some more mess comes up. So you think you're doing good, but then guess what happens? Some more mess shows up. Mm -hmm. And the mess is showing up so that God can clean it up. You see, we don't understand that just when the things happen and they boil, we get upset with ourselves for messing up, for falling down, for getting mad, for cursing somebody out. We get upset with ourselves about that, but God is saying, good, it manifested, now let me deal with it. God is saying, let me deal with it. You leave it alone, you stop trying to fix it, and let me deal with it. Let me help you with it. Let me show you the pattern to follow. And if you follow the pattern, you just might get a ship. And if you get a ship, you might be able to get in it and be saved. And everybody else can be lost. Mm -hmm. Who that mind you of? Noah. So understand now. So the pattern started in the beginning with what he had. Started from what he had. Start from where? Where you are. And there comes a point to where all of the dross is gone. And it can boil and boil and boil, and all you get is pure gold. Read. Verse 3. Uh-huh. Now you are clean. Now you are clean through, through the, the word, word which, which I have spoken, spoken unto you. you. So Yahshua is speaking, and he's telling his apostles, you are clean, how? Through the word that I've spoken unto you. I mean, let me just throw something in. Notice on the day of Pentecost. On the day of Pentecost, that was the first day that a mass number of people were baptized at one time. When they spoke the word, then they baptized people, right? Now, what, notice what you didn't see for, for all you Bible scholars. What you never saw in the scripture was Yeshua himself baptize anybody. However, the disciples who went out baptizing people were never baptized. They didn't baptize one another. So how were they clean? My goodness. He said, I'll wash you with the washing of the water of my word. So he said, the word you are clean through what? The word I've spoken unto you. That's why at the Lord's Supper, he washed their feet. Because he said, your whole body's clean. Now I need to wash the bottom of your feet. Herein is my Herein father glorified. Herein is my father glorified. Now this he- is, whoa, whoa. You want to glorify God? He said, this is how you glorify God. Right? Remember 1 John 4, 17? What does it say? 1 John, 1 John 4, 17, what does it say? It says, herein is our love made perfect, mm-hmm. that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Right? He said, herein, this is how you glorify God. Read it again. Start from the beginning. Herein is my Father glorified. How you glorify God? How? That ye may bear much fruit. That you may bear what? Much fruit. So God is glorified when you bring forth a whole lot. He's okay with fruit. He's okay with more fruit. But to glorify him, you got to bring forth much fruit. Somebody say 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. Fruit, more fruit, much fruit. So now, but you got to start somewhere. And he talks about, go to 1 Timothy uh, 1.16. Go there. Let's check the word out. 1 Timothy 1.16. Now, understand 
that when you follow a pattern, if you follow it, the instructions of most men, this is what we do. This is what brothers do. We get something, we go buy a cabinet, first thing we do is throw the instructions out. If you follow the instructions, you get the picture that's on the box. Sometimes you might throw those instructions out and you might end up needing them. Why do I have 15 screws left? Why is the box leaning? <laughs> Read. <laughs> How be it for this cause? Now, uh, what, what, where you at? First Timothy 116? Read. Yes, 116. What does it say? How be it for this cause I obtain mercy? Uh huh. That in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering. Here it is. That, whoa, whoa, whoa. That the Lord may show forth what? All, all long suffering. suffering. Read. For a pattern. For what? A, a pattern, pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. So the Lord set a pattern for us, right? Mm -hmm. With long suffering was one of the things he used. People lying on him. People spat on him. People, in essence, they cut him off when he was trying to get on the freeway. They jumped in front of him. Uh-huh. They got over in your lane when you was on the freeway and you was chilling, doing good, and flying big, and they just jumped over and just startled you. And what did you do? Anybody want to confess? <laughs> it's called road rage. But the Lord said, stuff along. So then, whatever is in you, if that dross is still there, and somebody cut you off, what's going to happen? The dross is going to come to the top. But if there's no dross in you to have to be boiled out, then no matter what nobody does, it's not going to affect you. Paul said, I do something every day. What does Paul do every day? He said, I die daily. So die daily, all that means is every single day, I am putting myself in a better position to flow according to God's word. That's what he said. I die how often? Every day. So every day I'm putting myself in a position to follow God greater than I did yesterday. So the pattern, if I follow that pattern, I'll end up with exactly what God wants me to have. Amen. Pattern, an outline, sketch, Hold brief. It. Hold it. That's Greek, right? Mm-hmm. Hupopotosis. Yes, that's it. Pattern, an outline. An outline. Sketch. A sketch. Brief and summary exposition. A brief summary exposition. Read. I like that. Keep going. An example. An example. For an example of those who should hereafter believe. For an example of those what? Who should hereafter believe. It gets better. Keep reading. To show by the example of my conversation. That whoa, 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 whoa. To show by example of what? My, my conversation. conversation. The way I speak and the way I live. So now, now don't get upset. Don't get upset when people begin to talk to you about what you did. Are y'all here? Don't get upset when I walk up to you and the first thing I do is do this. Because I'm used to you hitting me. Don't get mad. You tell me you sorry. I'm going I'm to greet you, but I'm going to be ready. I'm going to be on guard. Does that mean I haven't forgiven you? No. I don't mean I haven't forgiven you. It just means that I am accustomed to your works. The Bible said you know a tree by what? The fruit that it bear. And all the fruit that you've borne in the past has given me a red jaw. So therefore, I'm going to greet you, but I'm going to be ready. Don't mean that I haven't forgiven you. Yes, I've forgiven you, but what it means is I'm not a fool. Are y'all here? It means I'm not an idiot. So after enough time goes by and you have not hit me, then I start to let my guard down. Read. You responded to the pattern yes. that had been set. And after enough time has went by, oh, a like new it. pattern has been established. So now you respond to the new pattern. Okay, let me say it like this. I responded to the pattern that had been set. That's deep, ain't it? And after enough time went by, come on, am I preaching? I respond to the new pattern that has been set. So that is truth. So I'm responding to the house that you built. Don't get mad at me because your past has said you're going to do this. Don't get mad at the judge because he gave you 50 years if you don't want the time. Just that simple. So then we have to learn how to start right here and construct a new pattern because you reap exactly what you sow. The only way to cease the reaping and sowing is to pluck it up from the root and don't go back to it again. Start planting new seeds. 
Yahshua spoke to the, what kind of tree was it? Fig tree. He spoke to the fig tree. What did he tell it? He said, from this day forward, you will not bring forth any more fruit. The man talked to trees. He walked on water. Did he not? He talked to dead people. Did he not? Then he began to speak to trees. Could you imagine the apostles? What would you do if we went to a park and you saw me walk up and start talking to a tree? Uh, see? <laughs> we said, oh, man. <laughs> you see? You're going to think I'm crazy. So, man, we love apostles, but we got to get him some help. <laughs> right? Yeshua said to the tree, he said, from this day forward, you ain't bringing forth no more fruit. Now, when he spoke that, the tree looked exactly the same. There was no difference. And as the apostles walked by, the last one in the back, I can imagine that was Judas, the last one in the back, he looked at the tree and said, I wonder if they had a private meeting. He said, we got to pray for him. We got to pray for him, man. He's, you know, he's starting to lose it. I think walking on water has gotten to his head. Now he's talking to trees. However, they went to sleep. They woke up. They went back the same way on the same path. And guess what they saw? The same tree. What was the difference? Dried up from the root. Now, how do you know that a tree is dried up from the root? How do you know that? There can be a tree that's dry. What, what they don't realize is this. When he spoke to that tree, the root dried up right then. As soon as he spoke and said, you're not going to bring forth no more fruit, the root dried up then. All water began to go in opposite direction of the root of that tree. And so then, when they walked by the tree the next day, it, was, it didn't even look like the same tree. They, Peter said, ah! It's dried up from the root. What in the world if the tree is withered? So then the appearance was totally different. So don't tell me you're sorry, but you're treating me the same. That's the old pattern. I'm sorry. I love you, man. I ain't going to never hit you no more. Did you just flinch? No. I just said, I ain't going to hit you. Okay. <laughs> you served them with a long handle spoon. Why you keep serving with a long handle spoon? Because I don't trust you yet. I told you I was sorry. Yeah, I heard you. Yahshua said they praise me with what? Their lips, but their heart is far from me. So we got to learn how to create a new pattern. We got to learn how to pull all the bad seed up. And the, blessed, the best place to start is where? Right here. Right here. The best time to start is when? Right now. So we got to do this. We got to pull up them old roots. Otherwise, you're going to reap what you sown. Build a new tree. Create a new pattern. Be like the pattern. Paul said to the Philippian church, be like the pattern. Pattern yourselves after him. Paul told, uh, I think it was Timothy, he told one of, the, one, of the, one of his disciples, Paul said to them, imitate me as I imitate Christ. You ever seen an imitation of somebody? Billy Crystal, Billy Crystal does great imitations. He can imitate people and if you, you weren't looking, you would think it was them talking. You know the best one he does? Uh, he does uh, boxers. He does Mike Tyson and he does Muhammad Ali. You wouldn't even know it if you weren't there. Because why? The imitation is so good. That's what got Peter in trouble after Yahshua resurrected. Because they went to arrest him, and somebody said, there's one of them right there. And they went over, to, and he was talking. They said, aha, you talk just like him. Your speech gives you away. How come our speech don't give us away? Do you know why they didn't arrest Peter? Who knows why they didn't arrest Peter on the spot? When they said your speech give you away, but they didn't arrest him, why didn't they arrest him? He started cursing. They said, oh, no, he ain't one of them. <laughs> he don't go to 100 fold. They don't curse over there. I just throw that in. Hope I can talk. <laughs> you didn't see none of them at the club. They don't go to the club. Who went to the club last night? Be honest. Anybody go to the club last night? You went to the party last night? He said, he's in my fault. <laughs> he said, I went, man, my fault. <laughs> right? My bad. At least he admitted it. At least he admitted it, right? So now the chance is here to start a new pattern, son. <laughs> right? Start a new pattern. Start right here. The best place to start. The best things to use is what you have. Are y'all here? So when things get bad and you can feel things starting to go downhill, it doesn't mean it's over. All it means is God is revealing to you. He knows what's there, but he needs you to know. Because a lot of us have deceived ourselves in thinking that we're more than what we really are. 
we deceived ourselves. We looked in the mirror, we deceived ourselves, thinking that we are more than what we are. So we present ourselves a certain way, but our spirit is different. Some of us need to be followed home. Mm, you feel that? Some of us need to be followed home. See how you react at home at churches. Praise the Lord, my brother. Hallelujah. Follow that brother home. Uh-huh. You'd be like the lady, the guy that gave the testimony. Stood up and said, hallelujah. God is good. He said, God has been blessing me all week, saints. And then he quivered. You know, when you do that, people go, oh. And he said, the Lord has been good. And he gave a hot, fiery testimony. I was there. I saw this with my own eyes, heard it with my own ears. And the church went up into a shout. And they played the old sanctified black shout music. Y'all know that? Yeah. I said, y'all don't know nothing about that. And the folks started getting their dance on. Give me one of them dances, Brother James. Somebody give me one of them old sanctified dances. Okay, forget it. But they got their dance on. Thank you, Mission. Thank you. There you go. They got their dance on. Ain't nothing wrong with it. I like that. I like that. Ain't nothing wrong with it. However, after they got done dancing, the brother sat down in his pride. And his wife stood up in her humility. I want to testify too. Now, I'm over the testimony service. I said, go ahead, my sister, testify. She says, I need y'all to pray for my husband. He tried to beat me up on the way to church. Now, my, <laughs> now my brain, literally, people of God, seriously, when I heard her say that, my brain didn't work. My brain went, it's like, she did not. I said, excuse me? Yeah, yeah, he tried to beat me up on the what? Some of you need to be followed home. That's all I'm saying. All of this, all of this pretending at church, that's not the pattern that you're building in the real world. Right? Build and construct the real pattern by the blueprint. Some people are gifted. They can see a blueprint and actually see a building. That ain't me. When I see a blueprint, you know what I see? A blueprint. I don't see no building. I don't say I mean nothing. A bunch of lines and some numbers, nine by five. That don't mean nothing to me. Some folk look at that and say, oh, that's a nice bathroom. Like, where is it? But people who are architectural, they can look at something and see what should be there. You ever try to go rent a house or lease an a, a apartment or something, and you walk in and the people that moved out is not done yet and stuff is all over. Know what they tell you? Imagine that it's clean. I can't. I can't get past the smell. I can't imagine that it's clean. Clean that puppy up before you invite apostle. Clean up. Clean up. Set the pattern right. Remember a few years ago, we were in, at the other church in Tempe, and I was preaching, and I talked about saints who have dirty cars. Saints with nasty cars. Get in your car and you hold on. Hold on a minute, apostle. I got to sweep all this dead meat that's been in here for three months. Y'all know that smell. You get in the car and you're like, what in the world is that? You ever got to ride for somebody you smell the whole time? You got to ride like this. You can't even talk. Let the windows down. I, I, I remember I preached about that once. And a few weeks later, one, a young lady came up to me. She said, she's not here, so don't look at nobody. She came up and she said, Apostle, did you preach on me? So I'm thinking, what, what, what? Did you got a boyfriend? No. Okay. You get drunk? No. Okay, what? Do you party? No. Well, I guess I didn't preach on you then. What, what happened? She said, you was talking about nasty cars. She said, I went to the car wash that next day, and it's sparkling clean now. She said, I want you to go check it out. I went out there and looked, and it smelled. It had that new car scent and everything. I said, glory, I preached on you. I just didn't know it. <laughs> because we, as a people, should have a pattern that people expect to see. There should be a disposition about us. We should have integrity. As the scripture said in Hebrews 13 and 8, somebody want to quote that? Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we should have an expectancy. There should be a consistency about us. Hear this. There should be something, a way about us that people should expect. Are y'all here? Don't be super anointed today and super carnal tomorrow. Which is it? Are you that anointed for real? Or are you feeling good today so you got anointed?
Which is it? Are you barking because you're a dog or are you imitating a bark? Which is it? Which is it? There's a story about a bird that was in a cage and the bird would, the, the, the guy would go to work and leave the bird and the cat in the house and the bird would go, meow, 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 meow. And the cat would run up to the gate and, and hit, the, hit the cage and the door was locked and the bird would go, meow, meow. Mm -hmm. Except for one day, the bird got fed before the master left and he did not properly connect the lock. And he left and the bird said, meow. And the cat jumped up on the cage and the door flew open. The bird said, cockle, 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 cockle. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Why didn't you keep on meowing? Because it was stressful. And when stress hit, the real brother showed up. Uh-huh. When stress hit, you're going to start acting from your nature. Your nature is going to show up. Set a pattern, people of God. Set a pattern. Start here with what you have. Begin proper navigation. And keep it up. Come on, don't let us down. Don't be sweet to me today and sour to me tomorrow. Come on, are y'all here? Let's create a pattern that's going to stand, whereby people can expect the same consistency out of us. You know what a consistency is? You got to be consistent. Let people know that this is how you're going to be, period. You ain't got to worry about me. You can predict how I act in a situation. Most of you know me. You can say, well, if Apostle was here, he'd do this, he'd say that, he'd do this. Right? So let, have a consistency about yourself. Not, if Apostle was here, I'll oh, depend on what mood he's in. No! What do you mean, depending on what, how many moods you got? I think there's a personality to every mood. If you got five different moods, there might be five folk in there. Your most anointed day is your most original day. The day that you become who God has set for you to be. That's when the real anointing shows up. And you got to flow in that person and don't let nobody throw you off your game. Are y'all here? Stand up. Thank you for tuning in to the 100-fold radio broadcast with Drs. J.W. and C.L. Webster. Join us on Sundays at 11 a.m. for worship service and Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. for Bible class. Help support our ministry by donating online at www.ohfold.com. Like us on Facebook at OHFold or contact us for more information by calling 480-382-1008. It is our prayer that you achieve 100-fold. Until next time, Anai Hoev Atah in Hashem Yahshua. We love you in Jesus' name.